Hi guys, so Jason Matthew here and today we're going to be looking at the sodium potassium pump and to be more specific we're going to see why the sodium potassium pump is electrogenic. Now we have already covered this material. This material is not new. We have already looked at the sodium potassium pump when we did the podcast on neuroscience 2, the action potential. Now in that podcast we looked at the resting potential action potential, refractory period, as well as the transmission of action potentials. Now the thing about neuroscience too is that there was a lot going on there. The podcast was over one hour and as promised, I said I would break up neuroscience too into smaller parts. So today we're going to be looking at the sodium potassium pump. But please, I strongly recommend that you always go back to neuroscience too and look at that podcast. Because while I'm breaking up things into smaller parts in your sense too you get the whole holistic vibe of the whole thing you see how all the different ion channels and pumps how they work together to produce this action potential so all i'm breaking up in the smaller parts you can get a quick access to different sections of it please go back to the youtube channel biochemgm and look at the neuroscience 2 podcast so that it will tie everything that we're going to be looking at now back together all right so please go back to neuroscience 2 so let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at the sodium potassium pump. And we're going to be looking at charge imbalance and looking at the resting potential. So here's the sodium potassium pump. And as you can see, let's get our location or geography in order. This is inside of the cell. So it's intracellular. In other words, it's inside of the cell. And out here will be extracellular, meaning it's outside of the cell. And this here is your sodium potassium pump. And it's a transmembrane protein, meaning that it's spanning the whole lipid bilayer. So it's a transmembrane protein. And it's transporting two things. It's transporting sodium ions and it's transporting potassium ions. And if you watch, they're moving in opposite direction. Now the sodium ions are moving from inside of the cell to the outside and the stoichiometry, be very careful about that. It's three Na plus ions being pumped outside of the cell. At the same time, two K plus ions are moving into the cell. All right? So three Na plus is going out. Two potassium ions K plus is coming in. And this is being done using the sodium potassium pump. Now, because you, you've seen the word pump here, as a biochemist, you should know that we are moving against the concentration gradient, meaning that the concentration of Na plus is higher on the outside of the cell as opposed to the inside. And the potassium ions concentration is higher on the inside as opposed to the outside. So we are moving against a concentration gradient, meaning that we are moving sodium ions from a low concentration to a high concentration. And we are moving potassium ions from a low concentration on the outside to a high concentration of K plus ions on the inside. And anytime you, you, you move against a concentration gradient, you will require energy. And in the cell, you will need ATP. So for every three Na plus ions that are pumped outside of the cell and two K plus ions that comes in, you will need one ATP molecule. This one ATP molecule will be hydrolyzed to ADP plus inorganic phosphate. When this ATP molecule is hydrolyzed, energy is released, and that energy is used to move the ions. Now, because this is biochemistry, let's, or let's add in a few more things. This sodium potassium pump, it's a transmembrane protein, as well as it's an antiporter. And we use the term antiporter because this sodium potassium pump is transporting two ions, sodium ions, Na+, plus, and potassium ions, K+. Plus. And we say it's antiport because they are going in opposite direction. All right? So that is a little bit about the sodium potassium pump. Now we go to, well, we're talking a little bit about the resting potential. So we're using the whiteboard, so to speak. So let me do some drawing here. Let's say that this here is the typical neuron. All right, and we have a sodium potassium pump. So we are moving 
three and a plus to the outside of the cell in this case the neuron and we're moving two k plus into the neuron all right so this is inside the neuron all right I am, I spell neuron as N E U R O N E. I depends on where you're from. Like for instance, the American system, they will probably spell neuron as N E U R O N. So if you're using American textbook, you can see it as N E U R O N. And if you're from, if you were taught from the UK British system, you will see that they spell neuron as N E U R O N E. All right. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. All right. I guess it depends on the location where you're from or what textbook you're using. So on this side, it's outside, all right, of the neuron. In other words, um, extracellular, meaning outside the neuron, intracellular, inside the neuron. And you have your sodium potassium pump that is pumping 3 Na plus out, 2 K plus in. And as I said before, the concentration of Na plus is higher on the outside than on the inside and the opposite is for the K plus. The potassium ion concentration is higher on the inside. So essentially what we have happening here is that we are pumping 3 Na plus against this concentration gradient. We're going from low to high and we're pumping 2k plus in and we're going from low k plus concentration on the outside to high k plus concentration on the inside so again because we are moving against the concentration gradient we are going from a low concentration to a high concentration you will require energy in the form of ATP all right and that's why we say that this sodium potassium pump is electrogenic because if you look here there's an imbalance there's three Na plus, so in other words, there are three positive charges coming out. And for every three Na plus charges that is coming out, there are only two K plus coming in. So it's not being balanced. There's an imbalance. And what you see happening is that in the neuron, the outside of the membrane will be positive, And the inside will be negative. And we say that a potential develops. And this membrane potential is called the resting potential. So when a neuron is at rest, meaning that it's not receiving any uh, nervous impulse, all right, the resting potential will be like this, where the outside is positive and the inside is negative. And normally, the resting potential is given a value of minus 70, so that should be a zero there, all right, millivolts. All right, so the so the resting potential is around minus 70 millivolts. Now, depending on what textbook you use, you might see some textbook might say minus 60, minus 65, but most will agree it's around minus 70 millivolts. All right, so we'll go with that value. So the resting potential is around minus 70 millivolts, and um, that's when the neuron is at rest. That is when it's not receiving a nervous impulse. So what I've done here is to block off some certain words because this is like a revision now. So make sure you can figure this out on your own. So if you think you can't answer it right away, what I would recommend is that you go over what we just did. Because what we just did has all the information for the answers here and these to figure out what's being blocked out. So if you think you're not ready as yet, what I would recommend, go back to the start and go through it again. And as usual, what I would also recommend is that you should have your pen and paper alongside listening to this podcast and making as much notes as possible. Because I strongly believe that when you write, you will remember better. So please um, keep writing, keep making notes, keep summarizing these podcasts and make them your own. All right? So the heading here is Sodium ions and potassium ion distribution across the membrane. So you already know this. I'm, I, I think you're ready. Let's go. The major intracellular ion is compared to 
in the extracellular fluid. All right, so what you need to do is read the paragraph and see what you come up with. So let's go. The major intracellular ion is potassium ions compared to Na+, which is higher in concentration on the outside, extracellular. So again, the ion that is of highest concentration on the inside will be potassium ions, and the ion that is of higher concentration on the outside will be sodium ions. So based on that concentration gradient, the natural flow of ions according to their concentration gradient is for which one you think will want to leave based on the concentration gradient and which one you think will want to enter based on the concentration gradient. So give it a thought. Eh? We're, not, we're not looking at the sodium potassium pump right now. We are looking at based on the concentration gradient what will be the natural flow of these ions. So correct. Naturally, based on the concentration gradient alone, you would expect that potassium ions would want to leave the cell. And you will want sodium ions to enter the cell based on the concentration gradient only. And to leave the cell, that's efflux. And to enter the cell, that's influx. All right? The movement of positive ions out of the cell leads to the generation of a negative membrane potential while the converse is true for positive ion influx. Alright, so that's naturally, but we have a sodium potassium pump and the sodium potassium pump is responsible for the resting potential. Alright, so in other words, we do not let these ions move based on their concentration gradient. The sodium potassium pump is electrogenic, it develops an imbalance. And the sodium potassium pump um, creates this imbalance by moving the ions against the concentration gradient. So you should read this paragraph again, put it on pause, read the paragraph, and see if you can figure what the blank spaces are. So let's go. The sodium potassium pump is electrogenic. It creates a charge imbalance across the plasma membrane by carrying 3 Na plus out of the cell for every 2 K plus carrying. So for every 3 sodium ions that is pumped out of the cell, 2 K plus ions comes into the cell, in this case the neuron. Alright, and what does that do? What does that imbalance do? It makes the inside negative relative to the outside. And we say that the membrane is said to be polarized. The resting membrane potential is around minus 70 millivolts. So as I said, it's around, all right? That is the most common number that value that we go with. So guys, that's it. That's the end of the um, sodium potassium pump, all right? Again, please go back to the YouTube channel, BiochemGM, and look at Neuroscience 2. Because in Neuroscience 2, there's a lot more information, and the they're actually bringing the sodium potassium pump. They, they talk about the sodium, um, the voltage gated sodium ion channel. I also talk about the potassium voltage gated ion channel, and I show how all three of them come together to generate an action potential. And as usual, if you like what you heard and you learned something new, please show your love and press the like button as well as subscribe to the Biochem GM channel. If you have any questions or you have any material that you would like to share with us, please email me at jasonmatthew2011 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you guys. And as usual, thank you very much for listening. And I really hope this, um, this does um, makes a difference. So good luck, guys, and we will talk soon enough. Take care.